Okay, so in this lecture we are going to study how to manage and how to monitor the processes, uh, Linux processes. So uh, before starting the commands, we need to know that what is a process. So any program which is in execution that is called a process. Because program is just a set of instructions. But when that program then when that program needs to be executed, then that must be brought into the main memory. So a running program is called a process in simple words, and it consists of various things. For example, a list of address space that consists of security properties of the process that also contains the system and the process state in which state it is right now executing the current scheduling context the allocated resources uh, list of global and local variables so all these things are linked with the process right so a process id is the number which is allocated to a process and also it has a parent process id means the parent process which started it right so for example we are executing everything on this shell so all the commands will have the parent process id of the shell and all the processes which are executing they are the distinct active entities um, if there is a command um, in linux which helps you to show the process tree means the first process which was initiated when your system started and after that how the processes performed that is displayed by using a command that is ps3 you can anytime run this command and it will display you the hierarchical structure of the all the processes that are running in your system so if we press shift page up it is going to display you all the processes which are running and uh, this is the first process that 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 runs right so when we start our system then system d is the first process which runs and it starts the various processes right so uh, we were talking about process id and the parent process id so this is the topmost parent process in linux right so its process id will be the smallest after that all the processes as they were uh, as they were started they were getting the process id according to the their sequence right so at any time the parent process will have the small process id whereas the child process will have the larger process id right so first of all a process starts and it forks a child process right so that is done by using fork system call which is running behind the scenes so child process starts executing and till that time process the parent process it waits for the child to to complete its task right so after it is done it exits and it returns its status to the parent process and after that the parent process continues so this is the process life cycle also there are various process states like a process is new it is forked um, it is done, uh, scheduling is done, process is runnable, process can be stopped, it can be suspended, it can be resumed and process is running, right, process can be sleeping also, it is waiting also, right, so these are the various process states. So coming back to the commands, uh, all the processes which are running in your system they are displayed by using ps command so if you just run ps command it will display you that at this time bash is running which is your shell and ps command which you have just executed also it is displaying the process id and the terminal on which it is running right and the command and the time taken right so it is displaying all the processes which are currently running they are in running condition and if you want to display all the processes which are running behind the scenes all the all everything just on running every all the terminals that can be displayed by using ps hyphen ef option right so it displays the full information about all the processes running on current terminal and also on the different terminals of the same operating system 
so if you run this command it is displaying you this information so there are various fields in this uh, output and I am just scrolling up so it is displaying uh, user ID means uh, the user who is running these processes the process ID parent process ID its nice value all the other things are also displayed and this is the command which is running right all the processes which are bracketed they are the kernel processes they are the kernel threads and uh, it is displaying that see this, you can notice that system D it is the first process that run and uh, its process ID is 1 and uh, parent process ID is 0 right so if you page down then ps hyphen ef this is the command which you have just executed and its ID is 4620 and its parent process was 3896 and what is 3896 it is yeah this process 3896 it is bin bash means the shell on shell you executed this command ps ef so it is initiated by the shell so its parent process is 3896 right and its parent process is 3892 what is that 3892 it is the gnome terminal your this interface right so this is just an observation uh, so these are the processes which are running ps ef command displays all the processes right now we will move ahead we will learn how to control the jobs which are running that can be done. Uh, we'll take up an example. You can run any process. So G edit space the file name file name enter. Alright. Alright, so what it did, it just opened this uh, G edit editor and you can see that now the control is shifted to this process. Right, so you can see the carrot blinking over here, and we have not got the shell now. So I can enter data here, and when I'm done, I need to save this file. So Control S, I'm pressing, and after saving this file, if in the meantime I want to run some other command, I I am clicking here, but it is not moving the control to the shell we are not getting the prompt so control is just taken by this g edit so the only way to get the control back to the prompt is we need to close it so when we close it we got the control again now we can run the command we can run any command so now it is executing the command but I'm opening the prompt. Uh, I'm opening the file again. So now the file is open. So as you can see again that we have not got the prompt. So what we can do, I am shifting to the screen and I'm pressing Control Z. Now what Control Z does, Control Z is used to so stop a process means the process when the process is stopped you can see that this is deactivated right control is with the prompt with the shell so currently if I want to enter some more data I am clicking here but it is not taking the control means the process is stopped right so what how we can manage these processes is we can send the process in the background or we can bring the process in the foreground right so now if you want to bring this process in the foreground there is a command fg and then percentile and then this number right so this is a job id job id of 
this command right so if i run this command fg percentile 1 and i press enter what it does see gedit file name so control is with this interface the gedit and interface and we can enter one more line right and again prompt is not displaying right so we can pr press control z again we have stopped the process again and it, again this thing has the has been deactivated there's one more command which is bg see if i run bg command bg percentile 1 now what it does it has sent this process this gedit file name this process in the background means now you can observe that when i'm clicking here i have the control right i have the control and i've also got the shell i've also uh, got the prompt so if i run this command it is displaying gedit is also running bash is also running and this is the command which you have just executed so this is the way you manage these processes you manage uh, the jobs you can send them in the for uh, in the background or you can bring them in the foreground and uh, this makes the things easier this one more thing which you can observe right if you execute ps command it is displaying gedit is running 4757 this is the process id right so this is the process which is currently running now how we can what if you don't require this process for example for example if you are admin then you have to manage all the processes suppose you don't want any user to run any process suppose a process is running but that is a suspicious process you want to end that process uh, so how to uh, for uh, or at some times you need to manage the load also so in that condition also you need to kill the processes so kill command is used for that and uh, we can see that the process id of this gedit is 4757 so if you run kill space 4757 see the process which was running here that is just terminated right uh, now we can uh, we'll take up some more examples i'm starting the firefox in the background so it is just started and uh, you can see that by using ps ef command a lot of information it is displaying we can use grab command also firefox so it is displaying that the process id of firefox is 5165 again you can notice that its parent process id is 3896 which is the id of 3896 is the ID of bin bash right so Firefox it is the child of this process right uh, your bash if so as you can see that 5165 is the process ID so if you want to kill this process you need to write kill space 5165 just another example so the process is terminated but what if I start another terminal if you run ps hyphen ef command then you can see that there are two instances of bash which are running right one is 3896 which is this one and the second is and second is 5416 
which is your this terminal right so what i will do i will start g edit and file name and i'll start this process So gedit is open and uh, if you run ps-ef command again it is displaying that see bin bash this is 3896 right bin bash 5416 and gedit 5493 whose parent is 5416. Now suppose we want to terminate that shell 5416. Right? So we are trying to do that by using kill command and the id is 5416. Right? What it did can you see? We have the file and also we have the shell it didn't terminate it why because that process was a parent process and its child was still executing so if you want to terminate a parent process whose child is executing then you won't be able to do it in a in a in that in that normal way because when you execute kill command then that sends a light signal which is Sig term signal, right? That signal is comparatively light, right? So it didn't kill the process. But if still you want to terminate that process, you want to kill that process forcefully, then what will happen? The parent process will be killed, and all their all its child processes will also be killed, right? And that thing is called cascaded termination. And for that, you need to send that signal explicitly you need to write kill hyphen sig kill because in other way it just sends sig term signal by default right so sig kill then the id 5416 now what happened as you notice that the child process and the parent process both are killed right so this is how you manage the processes we have different commands like uptime like uptime it will display you that the system is up from what time how many users and the load it is displaying also we have one more command which is top command see what is the difference between top command and ps-ef command is that when you execute ps-ef or ps command with any of the options then that gives you the uh, gives you the static information right and top command gives you the dynamic information so it is refreshing the output of the processes which are running every five seconds right so top command gives you the all the information uptime it is also displaying you load average two users how many tasks and how many are running actually and how many are sleeping stopped and zombie processes it is displaying you everything right and uh, there are various commands also which are used inside this top command for example if i press d then it is displaying change delay from oh i'm sorry that is not five seconds it is refreshing the output every three seconds so change delay from three to then what what time for example if you if, I, if you write five then it will refresh the output every five seconds right if you write 1 or 2 it will refresh the time according if it will refresh the output accordingly so various things it is displaying one is the process id user which is running priority nice value virtual memory um, actual memory which is used 
CPU, memory information, time taken, and the command. There are various things which are displayed. Right. So you can come out of it by executing W by pressing W command. There is a folder, there is a directory in your system that is slash proc directory. It contains the information about all the processes. Right. This uh, for uh, this directory is related to the processes. We have various files, various important files in this directory. For example, if you view the contents of slash proc slash cpu info, there is a file inside this directory with this name. Then it will display you many things. So it is displaying you processor, vendor ID, model name. Right. Many things it is displaying you. In the same way, you have a file with name meminfo also. It is displaying you the memory information. Right. So, this is the way you manage all the processes. We will continue with the next chapter in the next lecture. Thank you.